let's talk about equipment. Since there is little small arms combat, there is more artillery fire, what should be the equipment of an infantryman? So it's full armor, Kevlar, body armor, Kevlar pants? Or is it better to rely on some kind of maneuverability and lightness? I would say that it depends on your tasks. If you spend more time in the trenches or at any post where a shell might hit, then it's probably better that you have more armor, where you could be hit. If your task is some kind of assault, then the main thing for you is maneuverability, so that you are comfortable. Because too much armor is not very comfortable. There is a basic armor that is a must-have. That is, a bulletproof vest, a helmet, and goggles. This is the most important thing that should be there. And then it's up to you. That is, it is better to have both an armored stove and a bulletproof vest and, just in case, Kevlar underpants. It's better that you have everything. And only then do you put on the necessary. Today I'm wearing this. Yeah. Open your wardrobe when you go on a mission. What am I going to wear today? Kevlar underpants, I think. Yes, I wore this yesterday. <laughs> The weight of the equipment plays a role. Nowadays, any equipment manufacturer, even weapons, compete for weight. We have a lot to do with technology, with other things. As a doctor, I have to carry a medical backpack with me, is additional weight. So, as Raver said correctly, much depends on the tasks that your department faces. I remember what it was like on my first combat mission. They gave me some kind of bulletproof vest, and there were these big metal plates. I put them on. Having estimated the weight, I thought, if they are heavy, they will protect well. Okay, cool. I was appointed as a grenade launcher. I mean, I had a machine gun, different bags, the RPG-7 grenade launcher itself, and five shells for the RPG. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was all on me. We hadn't gone far at all, 500 meters. But I barely made it. I gave it all up later. I fell. I was already lying down and thinking, will it always be this hard? <laughs> One armored panel, as I recall, weighed about 10 kilograms. Those were the first days of the war. We were outfitted with what that was at hand. Someone had armor plates cut from a Russian armored car. <laughs> You're serious? <laughs> they also weighed six to seven kilograms. <laughs> Shepard, your pretty good equals on the camouflage. Tell us, which ones are best suited to our realities? For our nature, for our landscape, depends on the time of year, because in the winter we wear one gear, in the summer another. The multicam form is now common that I'm wearing. It's the most versatile. On Raver, for example, the Makov form, it is a Ukrainian production, specially designed for our terrain. As far as I know, these are the uniforms worn by our special forces. It's relatively good at disguising in our forests, on the ground. Multicam is the American form, developed for the U.S. Army. Now they also have many units wearing it. And, honestly, I wouldn't say that there's something just better. So that for each task to find the perfect set of equipment, it must be a big wardrobe. <laughs> and you're looking at the weather, how many degrees it is, if it's raining, and you think, today I will wear this uniform. You also need to make sure emphasize the importance of knee pads. If there are no knee pads sewn into the uniform, 
put on separate knee pads, but they are usually very uncomfortable because they rub, they going down, other problems. It's best when they're embedded, like me, like Shepard, like you, they are built into the equipment. I have them sewn in, are not coming off, Shepard's are, yours can be removed. I like mine because they're similar for Kit Kat candy, and I'm having fun with it. You must have eaten the wrong Kit Kat. <laughs> it is important to understand. If you suffer a serious knee injury in combat, you're not really a fighter anymore. Then you won't be able to walk or run normally, crawling. How many times have I worn individual knee pads that just over the pants, they keep slipping? Maybe, there are some more comfortable ones that don't interfere. But when you run in them, they are 100% slide down onto your shoes and will be lost. From our modest experience, you should choose built-in knee pads and choose high-quality ones. Because after the outbreak of war, people who want to make money saw such a business niche, the form is missing. Sewing these knee pads, made of poor materials, a lot of flaws. Let's say you're crawling, and this knee pad, like yours, for example, breaks off and stays somewhere in the grass, and you're left without a knee pad. That's about the same. When we have individual fighters like Rambo are wearing t-shirts. I do not approve this, because when you are active, you are on the run, when you're crawling or climbing through a window, doing something you could get hurt. You can even cut a vein. And you need to bandage the wound. That it the man is already wounded. In the first days of the war, we look something like this, <laughs> wearing anything, parts from different equipment. There was even a man in a tracksuit. Yes, they were wearing tracksuits and other clothes, put on everything they had. February 24th, the first day of the war, when I first joined the unit, which was just being formed. I saw one of our soldiers lying down in a light tracksuit, and it's cold outside, and he had a small backpack. I asked him, what do you have there? Answer, underwear, socks, toothbrush, and toothpaste. I was very surprised at his preparations for the war. Wow. What about the shoes? Shoes are a separate topic. Talon, top. No matter what anyone says, Talon has really evolved, and it's pretty good. From the moment they started to make the first deliveries to the army, and now I'm even proud of it, that they can make such shoes in Ukraine. Yes, it's not the best in the world, but as for military use, are very good, worthy. It is worth saying that the quality and comfort of the shoes is one of the most important aspects of equipment. In uncomfortable shoes for 5 to 10 kilometers, you will rub your feet, unable to walk, practically wounded soldier. Sometimes when you go on a mission, you don't know how long you need to be in these shoes. Sometimes you can't take it off for a very long time, so the shoes must be of high quality. It's funny that we're praising Talon, but only I wear this brand. <laughs> well, you're the only one who praised Talon. Ah, no, no, uh, no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the most common brands in our country. It's Loa. Crispy. Crispy proved himself in the Azov regiment since 2014. It's practically eternal, comfortable shoes. Salomon is also a good shoe. I'm wearing 5.11 tactical boots now. This is the first time I've worn them for so long. This is believed to be an urban model, but I've been wearing them for a long time, and they're still intact. I would say that they are quite comfortable.